Hey guys, Pro here at VIP Outdoors. And today we're getting towards the end of our venison hunting season, if you will. So we got a few deer in the freezer. Uh, a lot of the juvenile hunts or what I call youth hunts are getting wrapped up. And that's what we have today. One of my buddies uh, was nice enough to bring me a venison neck, a whole neck. And usually in the field, what we do is we actually take the sides of the neck off the vertebrae. In this case, he just took a hacksaw, took the entire neck shank, if you will, off of the off of the animal and brought it to me. And that's perfect for this recipe. And we're making a birria today, which birria, traditionally speaking, is made out of goat or lamb. And venison is just, in my opinion, one off of a of a goat. So this is a, a perfect recipe. Um, to be able to utilize the neck meat, the shank meats, uh, the rib meat, a lot of the meat that has a lot of connect connective tissue, fat, bones attached to it. All right, so in one pot, we have our neck roast, which again is our full neck roast, bone intact, whole nine. We have a whole onion, yellow onion. We have a whole clove of garlic. And then I've taken a couple beef bones with marrow in them, tossed them in there, and then we filled that up with water. In the description, you're gonna find all of the exact measurements of what we're doing. I'm gonna leave that uncovered for now. And well, actually, while we're in here, if you look at this, we get a little bit of a top to that, a little bit of a fatty top to it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave that for now. But depending on which bones you use, if you use a beef bone, uh, I do suggest going through and skimming it every now and again. And what that'll do is I'll just give you a little bit more of a nice clean broth like this right here, for example. Taking all this little stuff out of there will give you a nice clean, clean broth to, to work with. Give you a nice base. Good thing about working outside, then you just throw it over there. I'm sure the dog will find it. All right, so that is gonna be our stock. Then what we're gonna do over here on our second pot, very simple. I took 20, actually 22 chiles, which 11 of them are guajillos and the other 11 are New Mexico's. If you don't have New Mexico's and you wanna use like uh, California's, but you want a little spice in there, you could also throw some chile de arbol in there. I threw a pinch of salt. I threw a couple heads of garlic in there about two inches worth of fresh cinnamon, a cinnamon stick. I took about two inches, broke it off, put it in there, and usually use about four medium-sized tomatoes or uh, Roma tomatoes. In this case, we had some extras in the little, I don't know, plastic container. So I just tossed them in there. It was about the equivalent of four tomatoes, about two cups worth. And then I put, I put four cups of water in there i let that come up to boil and i've simmered it for about 20 to 30 minutes the last five minutes is when i put in the tomatoes now all i'm going to do set this in the blender and we're going to blend it we're going to blend it for a long period of time i want to get it as fine as possible before i introduce it to our our venison All right, guys, I got done blending this. I want you to take a look at it. We have a paste in there. It's a little bit runny, but they're definitely a paste. If you dip your spoon in there, you'll notice, I guess that's not the best angle for it, but there's gonna be flakes left over from your chiles. That's okay. At the very end, we're gonna strain this entire thing. You could strain it before you put it in there, I prefer to do it afterwards because I want to get, well, everything that I don't want in that broth, I want to catch in the strainer at the very, very end. So now I'm gonna take this directly into my pot and you'll notice that color instantly turns nice and red. You can smell the garlic, the onion. We have oregano in there. We have thyme in there, comino. 
all that. The longer this cooks, the more it's gonna reduce, the more the flavors are gonna become condensed and a better final product you're gonna have. I've had this boiling for about, oh, 30 minutes before I got out here. Now all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a lid on it. I have it on medium heat. It's gonna come up to a slow boil and we're gonna let it boil until that meat on the neck starts to peel off. And once it starts to peel off, that means it's ready. Once that happens, we're gonna strain everything, have a nice bright red, bold flavored broth, and we'll take the meat apart and make some tacos out of it. So stay tuned guys, this is gonna be a great one. Okay guys, just getting ready to wrap up our birria recipe. Again, we made this out of a full neck, what I'll call shank. We got bone in and everything. Uh, on this venison neck. So now that we've boiled and reduced the birria down, remember I said it took about hour to hour and a half? That's a bunch of crap. It actually took about like four to four and a half hours before this neck roast got tender on us. I took it out of the stock, which this is what the stock looks like now. See how it's nice, deep, rich red color. Took the neck roast out. And then what you're gonna do, you wanna make sure it's soft enough for it literally pulls off the, I guess, vertebrae and get it all off. And that is a really tender piece of meat now to where before the neck could just be really hard because of all the connective tissue, all the fat. Dig in there pretty good. Get all that out of there. That's pretty good there. And there you have the vertebrae underneath. You got this little weird thing. I don't know, I'm not a veterinarian. I can't tell you what part of the deer that is, but I know I ain't gonna eat that. Okay, I'm gonna put that aside. I'm gonna bring this onto my cutting board. Get it nice and sliced up. I kind of like slicing it nice and thin because we're gonna put it back into the stock. And we're gonna make tacos out of this. I get it chopped up pretty good. Probably should have got a bigger chopping board, but that's all right. Video is one of those recipes that we didn't have Growing up, we didn't have a lot of it. It was almost like a special occasion type meal because we, my grandma used to make it out of goat and uh, it was a process. Like, I mean, a whole goat type process. So this is a new experience for me. And so far it's turning out pretty good. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put it back into a clear bowl. You don't have to be a clear bowl, but I'm gonna put it in here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to strain that stock right back into there. The reason we're going to strain that stock, because remember all the peppers and everything that we blended up, everything's very rustic in here still. And you don't have to. Um, it just makes for a little cleaner product at the very, very end. So I'm going to set that right down in there. Take this stock. Hopefully it doesn't spill everywhere. And shift it around in here in your strainer. And if you look in your strainer, once you have that strain through, you can see all the chili pods, the onion, the garlic that was on there. All that gets left behind, which we wanted to get left behind. And dump that in here. I'll leave that in there for now. We'll just work with this. There's plenty to work with. Now we're gonna put the tacos together. So come on over here to the barbecue. We're actually a flat top. A little bit of oil on here. I got the guys over. The guys are cleaning the gutters and 
doing the roof maintenance. So anyways, they get to eat lunch. They give you my taste test. Just quantos tacos quieren? Cuatro. Cuatro? 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 All right. So what I'm gonna do, first I'm gonna start dipping it by dipping it in the sauce. Now I'm gonna take it over here. I'm gonna turn that heat up. We want a nice fried outside. Now the taco is what we call dorados, which is a fried taco, right? A fried shell. This gives it a little extra flavor in there. The guys are gonna be like my ultimate taste testers. If it's good, it's good. If it's not, I'm sure they'll tell me. But I'm pretty excited about it. I had a couple taste tests and I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. The great part about this recipe is again, you could tweak the amount of chiles you put in there. Uh, you could tweak a decent amount of anything. That's a good thing about cooking, especially Mexican food. You want to put more tomato base, put more tomato base. You want to put more chiles, more spice, adjust your, your different chiles that you put in there, right? Based on your desire for for the heat level. How many is that? Nine? I'll make a couple for myself. A broken tort. That's all. I wish I had better corn tortillas. If you live in a place that you have those carnicerias around that make fresh homemade tortillas, I definitely suggest one of those. I had to run down to safe ways with I got dealt, but that's okay. Okay. Get these flipped. Starting to get a little bit fried. You definitely want them. See how they're starting to bubble a little bit? That's because of the moisture just trapped in there in the fried part. Turn all those over. Those ain't quite ready yet. Then I'm going to take some cheese. You want a cheese that's going to melt. Put it in there. What do I got in here? I got Monterey. I got uh, queso fresco mixed in there. Let's get these flipped. It's a little cold outside today, so on a warmer day, this is gonna get melted a lot faster. Right. Now on this side of the flat top, got some oil over here. I'm gonna take that shredded deer and sear it real quick. You don't have to do this by any means. You can go right into there, but I personally like it this way. You can put peppers in there. You can saute onions, put a couple different chiles in there, whatever you want. And you want to put even more flavor. And just warm that back up. Again, it's cold outside. So some of that deer roast was out in the open for a little bit. So you want to make sure you warm it back up and then just start putting it in tacos. I need to put some more on there. I need to fold these guys. Got stuck together. You know, I got introduced to these, this black stone top, I guess, flat top, when I was up in Alaska over at Seals Family Lodge. And I got back to one of my other buddies, Brian Jones, from Takedown Guide Service, who actually, his kiddo shot this deer. Um, and they brought this over for me. Bought it for my birthday because he noticed I liked it so much. And this thing, I do a lot of cooking on. It takes a little bit to get used to, like anything, right? Especially you get a cold day like this, you know, you got a hot surface and then cold top on the top of that. Okay, let these tacos warm up a little bit. 
so you can get that nice crust on the outside. That's what we're looking for. Okay, están las cucharas también. Ah, no, 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 no,